video is brought to you by Let's Synthesize Academy, the number one place for practice-oriented courses for serious music producers. Hey, Dan Larson here. Today I want to tell you my thoughts about the new Faceplan version 2.0, if it is worth it, if it's good enough or something like that through this little thing I made. <laughs> Like always, you can download these presets from my Patreon below, and if you want to dig deeper into new raw production, check my academy for awesome start to finish courses, but right now, let's jump into it. Okay, so this is the sound that I put together in the new faceplant version. I love this sound, but to be honest, the main sound is coming from a sample that I made in a previous faceplant instance, and that is purely synthesized. This is how it sounds, the original one. But because as you can hear, if I play with the pitch, it has a very, very different sound, and I really prefer the sample version. Faceplan 2 is crazy, and my favorite new feature is this thing. So it caused me a lot of headaches in the previous version to figure out what modulates what. But this little thing here, <laughs> this arrow, simplifies everything. And honestly, I've been waiting for this for ages. And it's here! The next thing is the new modulators. So as you can see, we have LFO tables. So you can put in any wavetable here to modulate everything. It's very, very handy. I think I used this in the, in the other instance. Yeah, I have this LFO table modulating a bunch of things here. And also we have the curve, which is basically an extended envelope where you can load up several stuff and you can set the looping points. It's such a cool device. But what I'm more hyped about is the audio follower. So if you have a sound, you can see that the audio follower gets the waveform of that, analyzes the audio peaks, in RMS and peak format, and then you can add several stuff, several process to it. So in this case, I modulated the filter cutoff, and simply because the sound is so cool, but it's very noisy, so it sounds almost like a constant noise on top of the sound. And that could be a cool thing if you are after the sound, but I don't really like that at this point. But if I simply just, you know, filter it, then it is too dull. So the audio follower is such a cool thing. <laughs> to filter the sound, to get rid of that constant noise sound, but still have very nice tops, the very shiny and crispy tops. And the audio follower for that is just crazy good. The next thing that I love is the snap heap and multi-pass additions, where now you can have the same modulators that we already know from Faceplan. And again, this is such a cool thing because, you know, you can add an LFO table, for example, here and just modulate the cutoff, like whatever you want to do. And what is even cooler, if you right click, you can see all the modulations that you set up. And that is really, really cool to see everything at one place. And you have the same thing in multi-pass also. So all the modulators are here. I love this new feature. Yeah, so I love this new faceplant version. And let me break down what I did to this sound to make it this cool. Ha! Because I love this. Okay, so the main sound source is a saw wave. I also used a clear sub and the noise on top of everything. These sounds, I mean the saw, the sub and the noise goes into lane 1. And I wanted to use another sign that goes into lane 2 and basically that is processing the main saw with everything with a noise on top of that. So basically in lane two, I'm processing the already processed sound and some extra noise on top of everything. Okay, so the first thing here is a formant filter. Let me deactivate everything. So this is a pure sound. And as you can see, I'm using unison. But first I wanted to add the formant filter. This adds some nice shape to the sound. Then a slice EQ, where as you can see, I'm modulating a bunch of things with an LFO and an LFO table. I'm not sure why this does not show now the target, but if I do the same thing now, it shows. So <laughs> when I made this preset, I, I'm not really sure why it just forgot to show me the modulation sources and the modulation targets. But anyway, it works, but 
in this particular preset somehow it forgot to show me <laughs> anyways as you can see i'm moving lots of slice eq peaks and notches uh, uh, back and forth and with a distortion after that we can create some really really nice harmonics then the limiter and here comes the magic the snap hip preset where i was able to a lot of process because as you can see i'm using four instances from the same sound and i process them differently so i keep a clear sub and a clip top end where i can play with the cutoff basically for some extra modulation if i want but the mid as you can see this is the mid here i added the phase distortion and an ott this is only an ott here and the filter to get rid of the lows because you know we have a clear sub so we don't didn't want to conflict with that then i have a mid high where i boosted the sub to play well with the distortion but before the distortion i wanted to add the gain to play with it so the input always determines the weight of the distortion so this is why the gain is here so i obviously wanted to avoid too much input gain to avoid too much distortion and another feeder where i can again play with the cutoff oh where is it here is it for whatever reason so i have the high cut clear top and then i process all these things in this lane so a distortion and the limiter basically just a saturation what you can do here in in ableton to add you know the, the main saturator And this is such a cool thing to have everything here to process several instances at one place so this is why snap heap is very very cool and as i told you before i processed everything with an extra noise in the snap heap second version where again i used two instances from the same sound a clear sub and the tops or the other frequency the rest of the frequency range um, with a notch another distortion a feather to chop off the low so, so we won't conflict with the first uh, clear sub and another feather and this again can be tweaked here and again at the end these two bands or two instances together with notch a theater and EQ to reduce some mids and add some more high speed, an OTT, a distortion and a limiter to the end. And it's so cool that you can modulate all these parameters using modulators or the macros in this preset. So when I finished with this sound, so this is the resampled version. So what I did with this is, you know, uh, I tweaked some of the parameters here in the snap heap preset. So I just tweaked the knobs and recorded that and put it into phase plan for another round. So I added an extra sub that goes directly to lane two and the main sample goes into line one, where as you can see, I cut the very lows. So the extra sub won't have confliction with the with the sample and then a so-called kick where i basically just kept the very first few milliseconds from the sample that i used here you know the main sample to have that extra click and i guess the filter kills it but it's here maybe that would be a good idea to send it directly to the master this way we are having some clip but if you put a saturator after the preset yeah so on the main sample i added another snap hip and the purpose of that's you know to being able to play with the top band to so have that extra weirdness to the sound and cut off to keep the sub for the extra sub group basically and on the muscle where i process the kick the main sample and the sub together is you know i have a feeder a flanger a little boost on the tops and mids, an OTT, and a saturation to the end. Oops, this should be saturation and the limiter. And if I use pitch band, it sounds a lot cooler than in the previous instance of face blend. It just doesn't have the good. But here, 
It's crazy. Loud and evil. Now head over to Patreon to grab these nice presets and check my academy for awesome new production tutorials and start to finish courses. I was Ed Larson. See you guys next time. Peace.